Welcome to corporate prayer this morning with New Hope Christian Center. I want you to know how important it is to pray unto our Heavenly Father. Go with me this morning to Psalms 91 and verse number 15. I'd like to read it to you. It's so important to have a prayer life because we need answers. Amen. Now, in Psalms 91, verse number 15, it says, He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. Have any of you ever been in trouble and needed to be delivered? Well, prayer and faith is the answer. God will hear the cries of your prayers. Now go with me over to Isaiah 65 and 24. I love this verse because God is telling us, before you even call on me, I'm listening to you. And how many of you know, you should rejoice and be glad that God wants to answer your prayers. Now in Isaiah, if you will, Isaiah 65 and verse number 24, it says, and it shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while they are yet speaking, I will hear. Now listen, in another translation, it says, while they're talking to me about their needs, I'm already ahead of them answering. Isn't that a wonderful promise in God's word? Well, today we want to declare and decree our victory and our success in the Lord Jesus. How many of you all are just happy today to be saved, to be sanctified? How many of you are rejoicing in the Lord? I want you to make some declarations with me today about walking in the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, my last verse today is in Jeremiah. Go with me to Jeremiah the 33rd chapter, Jeremiah 33 and verse number three. This is a powerful verse. It says, call unto me and I will answer thee. For those of you that have been thinking and believing God isn't hearing you and God is not answering your prayers, I want to declare to you today, do not believe the lie. It's a lie from the devil to keep you out of the secret place. But let's start that verse over again. It says, call unto me and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. God wants to do some great and mighty things for you. So I want you right now to just take a moment and just lift your hands and just say, Lord, I love you. And thank you, Lord. I bless you. Let's look to heaven right now. Heavenly Father, I ask you right now to give each and every one under the sound of my voice a heart to desire intimacy with you and your precious spirit. Oh, Heavenly Father, I ask that you would begin to stretch us and to challenge us to seek you more, oh God. Take us into the depths of your love. Take us into the depths of of your understanding. Heavenly Father, we ask you today to give us wisdom and to give us knowledge and understanding in your word. Oh, Heavenly Father, I pray right now that you would teach each and every one of us how to love, oh God, how to love unconditionally in the name of Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you right now Come on and thank him. Thank him that you're filled with the Holy Spirit. I thank you right now, Lord Jesus, that we are moving in a fresh anointing. I thank you, Lord God, that each and every one of us is experiencing the promises of God Almighty. Oh, Heavenly Father, we are visionaries. We are dreamers in the name of Jesus. I declare today that as we call upon your name, that you hear us and that you're answering us, whereby we have peace in the name of Jesus. Oh, Father, I thank you right now that each and every one of your children are anointed to serve in the name of Jesus. We are anointed with divine favor. Oh, Heavenly Father, I thank you. I thank you and I love you, Lord. And I honor and I worship you. Come on, somebody. 
lift your hands right now and just give them glory. We give you glory, oh God. We give you honor, oh God. We give you praise right now in the precious name of Jesus. Oh, Heavenly Father, we magnify your holy name. Oh, Lord, we love you and we give you great praise. Come on and lift your hands right now and just take a moment to, and look to heaven. Look to God. Oh, he's faithful. He's true. And he loves you in the mighty name of Jesus. Right now, I declare huh, that we're walking in victory. Huh? I declare in the name of Jesus huh, that we are more than overcomers. Huh? We are conquerors huh, by the blood of the Lamb. Huh? I thank you, Lord God, huh, that each and every one of us is overcoming right now by the word of our testimonies. Huh? We walk in faith. Huh? We walk in victory huh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Huh? Glory to you, Lord God. Huh? We give you honor and we give you praise right now. Come on, somebody say this with me. Huh? The favor of God huh, is surrounding me like a shield. Huh? I have the mind of Christ. Huh? All of my thoughts, huh? all of my feelings, huh? and everything that I have purposed huh, is for the kingdom of God. Huh? Oh God, I thank you right now. Huh? I lift you up, oh God. Huh? I thank you huh? that I huh, am walking in faith and victory huh? father in the name of Jesus huh? I decree huh, right now huh, that new hope oh God huh, is accomplishing huh, all that you huh, have destined us to do I thank you right now come on somebody Thank him that he's manifesting huh, his love huh, over us. Huh. I thank you that you want to show us uh, great and mighty things uh, in the name of Jesus. Huh. I thank you, Lord God, huh, that you are able to do exceedingly abundantly huh, above all huh, that new hope huh, can ask or think. Huh. I thank you right now huh, that it's working huh, according to your great power huh, that works. Uh, on the inside of us. Uh, oh, Father, I want to say I declare today uh, that God's uh, given talent uh, that he has placed uh, in each and every one of you uh, is manifesting right now. Uh, you are multiplying uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, oh, God, I thank you right now. Uh, somebody ought to thank him right now uh, for unlimited potential uh, that he wants to use uh, to get glory out of your life. Uh, I thank you right now, Lord God. Uh, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. Uh, I decree uh, and declare uh, that we believe the word of the Lord. Uh, eyes have not seen, uh, nor ears heard. Uh, neither has it entered uh, into the hearts uh, of you and I. Uh, all the things uh, that God has prepared for you. Uh, God has prepared uh, some great things for you uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, oh God come on and tell him thank you. I thank you Lord God uh, that you're giving us vision. Uh, you're giving us purpose oh God. Uh, and by faith uh, we will obtain everything uh, that you have called us to do. Oh come on hallelujah. Say I thank you Lord. Uh, I thank you that I'm moving uh, in my purpose. Uh, I'm moving right now in my destiny. Uh, oh God and I thank you uh, I thank you for the victory huh, right now. Huh? Oh God, we give you glory. Huh? We give you honor huh? because you are faithful, God. Huh? You are true huh? and you are good to us. Huh? And your mercy huh? endures forever. Huh? We decree right now huh? that our children huh? are rising up huh? in the name of the Lord Jesus. Huh? They are spreading the gospel huh? over the land huh? to the their friends and to their family huh? and we want to say thank you Lord huh? you've made us all winners huh? how many of y'all feel that right now huh? I'm a winner huh? in the name of Jesus huh? lift up your head huh? lift up your eyes huh? and see huh? the victory of the Lord Jesus Christ in your life huh? oh God I thank you huh? that each and every one of us huh? have been born to succeed
succeed. Oh, no, 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 no. You're not downtrodden in the name of Jesus. But we want to thank you. We thank you for victory right now. We thank you for success. Come on and feel the presence of God. He's on your side. And we say thank you, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord. I want to thank you, Lord. Somebody can feel that thank you right now. Thank you, Lord. We thank you for victory right now. I thank you, Lord. Come on and point at yourself right now and say, I'm anointed. I'm anointed. And I'm called to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Lord God, that I'm anointed right now. I'm anointed to prosper. I'm anointed to attract blessings to me. I do decree this uh, and I prophesy it right now uh, over myself. Uh, is anybody right now uh, praying with me uh, that they are victorious uh, in Jesus Christ? Uh, oh God uh, I just want to say thank you Lord uh, you're doing exceeding great things. Uh, come on can you see it? Uh, can you see it? Uh, and even if you don't see it uh, you can walk by faith. Uh, you got to know that you know huh, that our God is faithful. Huh? I need somebody to raise their hands with me right now huh? and just say thank you Lord. Huh? I'm grateful today. Huh? I thank you Lord. Huh? I thank you oh God for your goodness huh, on my life. Right now, I want you to decree. Huh? You might not be feeling well, huh? but I want you to decree right now huh? that I am redeemed uh, from sickness uh, and disease. Huh? I want you to decree right now huh? that I am healed uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, my body uh, is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Uh, oh God, uh, every cell, uh, every organ, Every tissue in my body is healed by the stripes of Jesus. And I want to say thank you, Lord. Now shine your light, God. Shine your light on us. Your glorious light, oh God. And fill us each with joy and with peace. Ah, kamarama sheo rosha. Some of y'all need to pray in your heavenly language right now. Come on and lift your voice to the Lord uh, and just thank him for peace. We thank you for peace. We thank you for the sweet aroma of the Holy Spirit. Ah, oh, feel him right now. Come on. He's healing that brokenness, that bitterness, and that hurt in your life. Come on, let him, let him give you some sweetness right now some peace and some love oh thank you lord wonderful jesus come on he's changing the atmosphere right now in your home just lift your hands and give them glory lord i thank you that you have kept us all i thank you for walking in victory in the name of Jesus. I thank you right now that we are born of the incorruptible seed of the word of God. I thank you, Lord God, that we are abiding in you right now. Oh, thank you. Come on and declare it right now. I declare that I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus. I thank you, Lord God. Come on and say this with me. I decree that I'm a new creature in Christ Jesus uh, and that old things are passed away uh, and that all things have become new to me. Uh, I thank you, Lord God, uh, that I'm walking in the nature of God right now. Uh, oh, glory. Uh, I'm created in his image uh, and I'm walking in his likeness. Uh, say this with me. Uh, I am seated uh, in heavenly places uh, with Christ. Christ Jesus. I'm the head and not the tail. I'm above only and not beneath. And I want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you right now. In the name of Jesus, we give you glory and we give you honor. 
and we love you. Now come on and just take another moment and bask in his presence. Sweet Jesus. Sweet Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Come on and thank him for this intimacy right now. Ah, Shama Babosha. Right now, I come against anything that would try to attack your peace. I command it to leave now. All worry, all frustration, go now in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that we are anointed to speak with new tongues. We are anointed to overcome any deadly disease. I thank you right now, Lord God, that we are anointed that when we lay hands on the sick, they recover in the name of Jesus. So we say thank you, Lord, for your anointing in the mighty name of Jesus. And we all said, amen, and God bless you.
Praise the Lord. God bless each and every one of you today. Just want to go into the Word of God. And if you would, turn your Bibles with Matthew's Gospel, chapter 18. Let's go down here to. And it reads on this wise and says, But the same servant went out and found one of his fellow servants, owed him a hundred pence, laid hands on him, and took him by the throat saying, pay me that thou owest. Let's pray. Father, we ask you to give us revelation and wisdom, turning your word, understanding the teachings for today. Holy Spirit, we thank you that you're going to open our eyes on in revelation to us right now. Thank you for this. Pray we will right step. All set. Amen. We had been uh, dealing with a series titled Divine Healing. And I want to bring us into this subject here a little sidebar from it and we take up this, ses this session for today, or this message for today, which we want to entitle Conquer Intimidation. Now, even connected with healing by itself, there's, sickness can be very intimidating. But here we want to uh, take a look and do a study here on just intimidation. Now, when we talk about, uh, when we talk about conquering uh, intimidation, and when you conquer something, you subdue it. Or you reduce it by physical force, it by, by physical force, even to overcome or to vanquish, to gain by force. A matter of fact, uh, Job chapter six and verse twenty-five said, "How forceful are the right words? How forceful so is a force." So therefore, it has been said. Uh, one of the quotes that I, I've heard it says, uh, one, uh, "No one can, uh, no one can make you feel inferior without your consent." No one can make you feel inferior without your consent. So therefore, there's a lot of people that have consented to have the sensation of inferiority by other people putting it on them. But they need your consent or they need your allowance to take place. So here, let's go a little bit further. Even when we talk about intimidate someone, it means to obtain by, watch this, to obtain by a threat, to obtain by a misuse of authority. Or even another one, it means also to mishandle you or manhandle you. You know, when you manhandle somebody, you grab them by force and you throw them around. Look here, even what we're uh, here looking at verse, at chapter 18. Jesus teaching on the principle, all in Matthew chapter 18, about forgiveness. And here, he picks it up, and uh, let's go to verse 21. and Look what it says here. He said, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how all shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him till, uh, till seven times? But well, look at Jesus now. Verse 22, Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. In other words, God is saying that the key word is until. Peter was stating, was stating a number, and, and usually the rabbis at that time, they would teach three times. But Peter brought up seven to try to bring it, you know, he, he wanted to bring it up seven, so it make it a little bit extra, a little bit more. But Jesus taught him, he said, no, not seven times seven, but 70 times seven. So he wanted to make an astronomical amount so that it couldn't be met. Matter of fact, let's go here in the book of Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. In the book of Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. Praise the name of the Lord. And let's go here to verse number three. They'll talk about handling offense. He says, take heed to yourselves. I uh, said, if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him, and if he repent, forgive him. Verse 4, and if he trespass against thee seven times in a day, and seven times in a day, turn again to thee and say, I, I repent. Thou shalt forgive him. So here, Jesus teaching, making forgiveness an astronomical amount so that no one would be able to say at a certain amount, I don't have to give. And really, we have our personal commitments in our own selves. You know, I'll only do it three times. I'll only do it seven. We have a number, uh, somewhat of a unscriptural way we just think of things. I've got this number in my head of how much I'm going to tolerate, how many times I'll take it. After that, that's it. So I have a stopping point somewhere with it. But here, let's continue a little bit further. When we talk about intimidation, too, watch this. In order to, uh, to have effective, 
effective intimidation, you have to have two parties. Matter of fact, intimidation can run as an individual to an individual, and then it can also run from a group to a group, and then it can also run from a nation to a nation. So intimidation can on different levels of it. And so when we see this now, now watch this now, because one is an, is an intimidator, and I like the way uh, this, uh, I was looking it up, and it's very interesting. He said an intimidator, watch this now, he said, uh, is one who intimidates brave. He intimidates the brave. Now, he's intimidating someone who's brave. Watch this. In order to do that, he degrades this individual or degrades the great one. Matter of fact, let's get a little, let's get the word of God into us a little bit here. Let's look in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, 1 Samuel, chapter 17, and verse 32. And we've all heard the story of David and Goliath, praise God. But we want to extract from that some points to give us some understanding concerning things that are going around and when we're dealing in comparison to intimidation. Now here at verse 32, look what it says. And David said unto Saul, Let no man's heart fail because of him. The, uh, thy servant will go and fight with this Philistine. So at the time uh, that Goliath was, you know, he was challenging the whole army of Israel. There was nobody to go out there and fight him, not even the king, who was the tallest man among all the Israelites at the time, and he was the king. But yet and still, David turned around and he said, he said Let no man's heart fail him. He said, Tell the guys, relax. Don't be upset. Don't be frustrated. I'll go out and fight for him because they, nobody wanted to go and fight Goliath because they saw the statue of Goliath was about nine foot, uh, about nine foot tall. They saw him, Goliath, you know, and, and how tall he was, how big he was, and he was talking stuff. Man, he's talking a whole lot of junk, but nobody would challenge or come up to the challenge. But David, praise God, David at that time came up and said, you know what? and he was talking, he talked to the king, he said, you know, let no man's heart uh, faint. Don't let nobody falter. I'll, I'll go out and fight him. We got someone that'll fight him. Praise God. Now, it looked like uh, <laughs> it looked like you fighting Mike Tyson. Praise God or Muhammad Ali. Praise God. That's you know, if you look at it, because because of his experience, because of who he is, he's going to win all the night. But let's look a little bit. Praise God. Just remember that. Verse thirty-three. And he said, and Saul said to David, Thou art not able to go against this Philistine to fight with him. For thou art but a, but a youth, and he is a man of war from his youth. Now, he's a man of war from his youth. And David, he's, so Saul's looking and said, this guy been fighting all his life, and you getting ready to go to this fight right here. Uh, you're not going to be in comparison to him. But David knew God and knew something. Now, look, look what it says in verse 34. He said, and David said unto Saul, thy servant kept thy father's sheep, and there came a lion and a bear, and took a lamb out of the flock. And I went out after him and smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose and when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard and smote him and slew him. So wait a minute now, praise God. So uh, David, uh, David is a lion killer. David is a bear killer. And listen, he's not scared. So if, if he can defeat animals, humans aren't no problem to him. Now look at what he said a little bit further, verse 36. And said, Thy servant slew both the lion and the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing he have defied the armies of the living God. But wait a minute, he calls Goliath an uncircumcised. He says, This guy doesn't have a covenant with God. He doesn't have a chance. He said, the same way that the lion and the bear was defeated, God gave me victory for the lion and the bear. I'm gonna do it to the same uncircumcised Philistine, because he doesn't have a covenant with God. How valuable is your covenant agreement with God? Very important. You can win battles from it because you have a basis of victory, praise God. Because watch this, God is with you. You're in connection with God. For with God, all things are possible. Said that in, in Mark chapter 9 and verse 20. That all things are possible with God. Now, let's look a little bit further and continue. In verse 37, he said, And David said, uh, David said Moreover, the Lord that delivered me out of the out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the land, out of the hand of the of this Philistine. And watch this, and Saul said unto David, Go, and the Lord be with thee. Now, 
He says, go, let the Lord be with you. He, because of David's past testimony, my brother, your past victory is your setup for your, now your present victory that you're about to receive. It, it encourages because of what, if God did in the past, he can do it in the present and can do it in the future. So he has a track record with you. You have certainty, praise God, because that's why it's important to remember your testimony. And David remembered his testimony when, when the situation came up and it was complicated to the point where he should just fold and just go on home like the rest of them. He shouldn't be walking in braveness. But see, remember I said the intimidation here again. It talks about, uh, uh, when we talk about an intimidator, we're talking about the intim he is one to intimidate someone who's brave, someone who's courageous. Now, or to degrade someone great. The Bible said in 1 John, Chapter 4, verse 4, it said, Great is he that's in thee than he that's in the world. So the greater one is already in you, praise God. No matter what talent or some, whatever uh, thing that's before you, praise God, task or assignment that's so humongous, so large, it, it's just escalating and even getting bigger, praise God. Looks like it's going to overwhelm you. But I come to tell you, praise God, God can give you victory because, watch this, no matter how big it is, he can give you the victory if you listen to him. If you'll follow him, he will always, Jesus' job is to bring victory and not defeat. A matter of fact, the greatness of God, when God is in you and God is with you, you have it all that you need. Now, he can, when he gives you instructions to grab other people, that's a little bit later. But God has the victory already for you. Now, so let's go, let's look a little bit, uh, still continue as we're looking at verse 38. Again, uh, 1 Samuel chapter, uh, chapter 7 and verse 38. And he said, but this, watch this now. He said, and David, arm, and, and Saul armed David with his armor and put an helmet of brass upon his head. Also, he armed him with a coat of, main, uh, of mail. Now look at this, verse 39. And David girded his, uh, girded his sword upon his armor, and he assuaged to, to go out. And he had not proved it. Watch this. And David said unto Saul, I can't go, I can't go out, uh, I can't go out with these, for I have not proved them. And David put them off him. In other words, Saul puts his armor, puts that, he puts everything that he assumes that he needs. But put the, David was a smaller man, all this big stuff is all big and bulky and moving around. And he said, you know, you know, I can't go out there and have this fight right here. So he took it off. You can't put on someone else's armor, someone else's victory, praise God, for you. You're going to have to get your own. And so wait a minute, that which, that which God has given you and you've trained it and used it and know that it works, my brother and sister, go ahead and go forward with it. Now, so you're putting that armor on, and the Bible talks about put the whole armor of God on. So therefore, so, so David was saying, Saul, I can't put on what your stuff is. I got to use what I got. My brother, my sister, if you use what, what God has given you, you have what is needed to get the next victory that's in front of you right now today. The challenge is not so, a matter of fact, right now today, from the past that you've had, the past was preparing for you for this present problem that you're going through. Are you still with me? With what? With this present problem you're going through. Now, but let's look a little bit again. Let's go back and uh, look here in the book of Proverbs, chapter 6. The book of Proverbs, chapter 6. When here we're want to take a look and want to do somewhat of a comparison here. Let's look in Proverbs chapter 6 and let's go down here to verse number 1. Pick up our reading here. Look what it says. He said, My son, if thou be surety for thy friend, if thou hast, stri if thou hast stricken thine hand with a stranger, now watch this, that thou art snared with the words of thy mouth, Thou art taken with the words of thy mouth. Do this now, my son, and deliver thyself. Watch this again. That when thou art come into the hand of thy, of thy friend, go and humble thyself and make sure thy friend. Okay? Now, I want to read it for you. Now, that's the King James translation, but I want to read it for you in the Amplified. And look at what it says. It says, my son, if you have become surety for your neighbor, if you have given your pledge for a strange, a stranger or another, you have snared or been trapped with the words of your lips, 
you are caught by the speech of your mouth. Verse 3, said, do this now at once and earnestly. My son, deliver yourself when thou have put yourself into the power of your neighbor. Go and beset and be sure and humble yourself and beg your neighbor to pay his debt and thereby release yourself. In other words, it's not good to cosign. In, in, 20, in, 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 in our time, to cosign, that's what he's asked. Said, don't be a cosigner for someone you don't even know. Someone that's not even close to you and doesn't have a good paying record already. This is going to cause problems to you. So don't pledge or be cosign and guarantee the loan that you're going to pay in case they don't pay it. Praise God. When it comes to it, you got to get sent that you're able to not only pay their loan, but also be able to pay your loan in the same process. So it says don't do it. So here, let's go and look at our verse of scripture that we started off. Uh, let's go back to the book of uh, Matthew's gospel. Chapter 18. Let's go back to Matthew chapter 18. And uh, we want to catch verse 21. Start up. We're going to go up a little bit further. We're going to start off on verse 21 and catch this. Now look at what it says. He said, Then came Peter to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him till seven, uh, till seven times? And Jesus saith unto him, I say not unto thee uh, till, till seven times, but but till 70 times 7. In verse 3, And therefore is the kingdom of heaven likened unto a certain king, which, uh, which would have taken account of his servants. And when he, had get, and when he began to reckon, one, of, one was brought unto him, which owed, watch this, which owed him 10,000 talents. So he owing in the millions. This guy owes millions. Okay? Now, Oh, wow. This guy, he, now, just to have enough trust that he gave him millions, and he took that trust, and he stole it and, and lost it. Look what it says a little bit, verse 25, though. He said, and for as much as he had not to pay, his Lord commanded him. Now, look, watch the command. His Lord commanded him, watch this, to be sold, number one, sold his wife, his wife and his children and all that he had and pay uh, uh, and payment to be made, and payment to be made. So watch this. So his wife is sold into slavery, and his children are sold into slavery because of the one debt that daddy had. Now, let's go to a comparison, take a look at something so we can get this. Um, uh, uh, let's go to the book of First Timothy, not First Timothy, correction, First Kings, and, uh, well, not First Kings, Second Kings. Chapter 4, 2 Kings chapter 4, and uh, let's start here at verse number 1. We can pick up at verse number 1. Can we get that? Again, 1 Kings chapter 4 and verse number 1. All right. Now we're making comparison. You see the situation that we have there in, in uh, Matthew chapter 18, and now we're going over here to uh, to. 2 Kings chapter 4 and verse number 1. Look at what it says. That now there came, now they, uh, now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the prophets and of the prophets unto Elijah saying, Thy servant, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord, and the creditors is come to take unto him uh, my two my two sons to be bondsmen or to be slaves. Now, the creditor is the guy. The creditor is the intimidator. Credit can intimidate you. Everybody wants to have credit, but when you owe, it can be very intimidating. Look at what it says here, especially for this first verse here. Now, because of bad, bad credit and ha bad handling of money, now the debt goes down to his wife, and then now it goes down to his children. So now destinies are now involved with debt. The creditor, because again, the book of, in the book of Proverbs, it talks about that the borrower is subject unto the lender. And so therefore we see that concept. So now because uh, the lender now has, because he's the older prophet, though he was a, though he's a man of God, he was good, he was religious, but he didn't handle his debt right. So there are some church folk that don't handle debt right and have debt problems 
And so, therefore, this causes a problem. Not only for him, he passes. He's out of the equation. But now it's his wife and now it's his two sons. Now, they have to pay for what dad did, but dad gone, but they're still existing. They're still alive, and they got to, they got to deal with what dad has done. They didn't do it. They may have benefited from what God, that dad had done, but they have to pay it back. Now, this woman, she's so smart. Instead of going to her local, uh, local bank, praise God, and, and get her loan, praise God, she goes to the man of God. And once she gets to the man of God, he explains the situation. Look a little bit further now, verse number two, because when you have a problem, you need an answer. You don't need another problem. You need an answer to solve that problem. Look again. Let's go to 2 Kings chapter 4. Let's look at verse number 2. And it said, And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, Thy handmaiden had not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. Then, then he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels, borrow not a few. Now, Listen to this now. He's saying, now the man of God is telling her to borrow. So now, borrowing in this concept, it's better not to borrow, but it's a principle when he's teaching her because there's, some, there's a key in the borrowing here. Now look at verse number four. He said, and when thou art come in, and thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shall pour out into all, all those vessels, and that and that shall set aside that which is full. So wait a minute now. So the children, because they're involved now. So the debt release is not just the mother doing something, but her sons have to help her because they're involved too. Because if this doesn't work, they're the, they're the generation that's going to have to pay the debt. So when they're involved in it, so they're also they're involved in the miracle that needs to take place because the man of God watches for, to, to, to conquer intimidation, you need instruction. To conquer intimidations, you need instructions. So when she came to the man of God, he gave her instructions to bring her to the, her deliverance or to her victory. Now, look what it says here. Again, now, again, verse uh, 2 Kings chapter 4. And let's go down here to verse number, uh, verse number 5. And it says, So she went, went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, which brought the vessels of uh, vessels to her and and she poured out now watch this now because the sons as well as the mother is involved in the miracle look at verse 6 and it says it came to pass when the vessels were full that she said unto her son bring me yet a vessel and and he said unto her there is not a vessel more and watch this and the oil stayed in other words the oil stopped when there was no more vessels or no more for it to be poured into. The miracle only is going to stop when you don't have any other vessels. You got more than enough. My brother, my sister, God want to give you more than enough. El Shaddai, he's more than enough. So therefore, they get, she get more than enough. Now look at what happens here. Verse 7, and it said, and she came and came and told the man of God, said, go sell the oil. And, and pay the debt, and live thou and thy sons, and thy, I'm sorry, and thy children of the rest. So wait a minute now. The miracle is also the release for her. The release is also for her children. Remember, God isn't forgetting your seed in this miracle working that he's getting ready to work, work in your life. And so therefore, that took place. She, all of a sudden, she became uh, a, a land, praise God, an oil owner, praise God, having plenty of oil. And she took care of her needs, took care of the needs of her children. So now destiny, her, now, now her destiny is now released because she followed instructions. Now, in order to, you got to remember, in order for you to work, to have the miracle working power of God, God has to instruct you. Let's look at some principles that I want to bring to light a little bit to, and, and, and set that in order. How do I overcome intimidation? Now, the first thing here. When you're intimidated, let's go here to the book of Luke, how to overcome. The first thing in overcoming, let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 14, and let's go here to verse 28. Now, we're seeing some practicalities, how to, how to overcome this intimidation. Now, the intimidation is debt. 
Now, it can be debt or it can be a task. It be whatever thing that overwhelms you, if, if that, that intimidates you. Or that, what, when I talk about intimidation, that makes you small or helps you to be shrink, shrink down. So let's go back again. Now look at verse, again, chapter, Luke's Gospel, chapter 14, and let's go here to verse 28. And he said, For which of you, intending to build a tower, set, uh, set not down first, and count the cost whether, uh, whether he have sufficient to finish? So therefore, in order to overcome that challenge or that task that's before you, that's so overwhelming, so overcoming, and listen, you got to sit down. You got to set yourself, and then he said, count up the cost. Look how much you need to have to finish the work. This is an accounting practice, you know. Um, this is something you got. You got a plan to go be somewhere or to do something. Praise God! You're gonna, you want to do a particular venture. You got to see if you financially set to be able to do it. Lest you find yourself in in the poorhouse, and that's what what's happening. You know, retirement's coming up, praise God, and, and even you going into another venture, you got to understand or have an understand how much it really costs and do you have enough to be able to perform this task or to be successful in it. A lot of times people don't sit down and count up the cost. They go on out there and find some stuff, praise God, out in it, and therefore it's not wise. But if you'll sit down and you'll take time to count up the cost, count up how much I have and how much I don't have, and see what's required and make that balance. And then you can make that determination. That is one way to overcome. Because life is challenging and, and, and life's intimidating sometimes. And things that not, we're not just talking about the devil only, but I'm talking about, now he's an intimidator. That I don't want to let him off the hook. He is an intimidator. And he will intimidate you with fear. The fear that makes you feel small. The fear that intimidates you to the place you don't want to, you don't want to look at him. You're scared of him. Let me try to tell you, so watch this. You got to sit down and you're going to have to collect yourself. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Hold. For God has not given you the spirit of fear, but he's given you the spirit of power, love, and of a sound mind. So therefore, you have to take that soundness of mind, sit down, because, and then he said even greater, he said, he, he told us, he said uh, there in, in the book of Psalms again, he said, be still and know that I'm God. Be still and know that I'm Not that, watch this. Not that I'm not, I'm going to help you. You're not out there alone. I'm going to be with you. But you're sitting down and you're seeking the instructions or you need God to give you direction and counsel. If you're going to overcome any intimidations in your life, no matter what it be, you're going to need to sit yourself down. Get yourself prepared first. Count up the cost. But watch this now. After you get to count the cup, you got to bring that to God. You got to bring that to God. Because God has the key for the victory for everything that you need. God has the key to every victory you need. God has the key to every victory that you need. Now, let's go here. Let's go back to the book of Joshua. Because when we read through the scriptures, we read all of the people that were challenged. They, a matter of fact, there's nothing but a whole lot of challenges in the scripture. So God can show you because God has already built a track record from the people he helped. He will help you so you don't have to feel that I, my problem's so bad, God can't fix it. I come to tell you, God is able uh, to meet every need and any need that you have. For the Bible said, for all things, for with God, all things are possible. My brother, I want to encourage your possibility to rise up and grow up. Let's go here to the book of Joshua for our teaching here. The book of Joshua, because, so therefore, one of the things when, when you're overcoming, positioning is important. But I say positioning, because see, you you cannot you can't give in to you can't yield to it being impossible. You can't yield to impossibility, the task or the assignment or the thing that you got to do, and all this around and it looks so astronomical you can never reach. But I come to tell you, with God, all things are possible. I don't I don't know what you have you're facing or what you're facing, but I come to tell you, all things are possible to him that believes. But again, you got to position yourself right. You got to count up the cost. Positioning yourself, sitting still. Let's go to another, another portion here. Look at the book of Joshua, chapter 6. And look at verse number 1. Now, this is kind of interesting. Look what he said, verse number 1. He said, Now, Joshua, uh, now, now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out 
and none came in. Verse 2, and the Lord said unto Joshua, now watch this, Joshua sees that nobody can go in or come out, and look what God does, and God said to him, watch this, now look, we have to be able to see God's perspective of the problem that we see. Look at what he said. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given, uh, given into thine hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. So the mighty men of valor, Jericho was so tall, praise God, a, a walled city. And it was so big that the chariots would be able to ride up on top of it. So these guys are looking down at you. I mean, intimidation always looks down on people. Now, it's also something when, when, we, when we read in Matthew, how that this, this person was freed of the debt, but he went and found somebody, and that person owed him not, not millions, but thousands, and he grabbed them by the throat. When people owe you, what's your attitude? Look at your attitude and your response, your, your motive, you know, and, and you just, you're threatening. Are you threatening people because they owe you? Because they owe you. But let's continue. Just ponder that thought of you threaten them. You want to get back to them. You know, no, no, I don't want to hear nothing. There's you threatening. Because you're the, you're the creditor and you're going to grab them by the throat and we'll even choke them. Praise God. You better give my money. Who do you think you is? And, and got all those things recorded to tell them. I almost think it's on, uh, to me, I compare it to bullying. You become a bully when, when people owe you. You paid them. But at the same time, because they didn't pay you, you become a bully. You're going to get your money, and you're going to get yourself in trouble too. Let's go here to verse uh, again. Joshua chapter 6 and verse 3. And it says, And ye shall come past the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. Thou shalt do six days. Watch it. He's getting the instructions. Watch this. And the seventh, and seventh priest, and the and seven priests shall bear before the ark seven, seven trumpets of ram's horn, and the seventh day ye shall compass the city seven times, and the priests shall blow with, uh, with the trumpets, and it shall come to pass that when thou makest a long blast with the ram's horn, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout and the wall of the city shall fall fall down flat and the people shall ascend up every man straight before him in other words the wall is so tall but after the shouting and the long blasting the praising the lord hallelujah giving that shout he said it's going to come down if your pra told shout, your praise will bring down the wall and it'll bring it down flat to the point you can he said, you guys are going to be on the even level right now. And so, therefore, they were able to get the victory. But he had to listen to the instructions from the Spirit of God, from the leader of God. And we're so glad I come to tell you, this is how. Because in any war that will take place and any intimidation takes place, first there is a physical, not a physical, but there is a verbal conversation that goes on. Verbal threatening. I'm going to do this. You know, when you watch boxers. And they're about to uh, have an engagement for an upcoming match with one another. You said they'd be junk talking. You know, they, they talk junk to one another. And they try to intimidate one another in here. And they say, woo, woo, and, you know, get everybody excited. And, that, and that's, to, that's to stimulate the crowd and have them come out and see it. And so they just junk, uh, junk talking. But at the same time, that's how it is in natural war over things that you got to deal with. And so, therefore, because you have that verbal warfare, the Bible said in the book of uh, Romans chapter 8 and verse 37, said, what shall we say to these things? Nay, and all these things were more than overcome. So it's necessary that we overcome by the words coming up out of our mind. A matter of fact, when we repeated earlier, Job chapter 6 and verse 20, how forceful are right words. How forceful, how powerful, how effective are right words. And so therefore, my brother and sister, there's a word war. So don't be intimidated from the talk. Don't let don't let the talk te tear down your courage and tear down your, your bravery, praise God. Because greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. If God has asked you to do something and now you're challenged by what he's doing, I come to tell you, praise God. He also has the instructions for you. You're going to sit down, position yourself to hear him, 
and he'll give you the instructions because God has always intended for you to have the victory. No matter how astronomical it looks and how impossible it looks, when God has said for you to go do it, he's going to watch this. Now, he doesn't say for you to go do it by yourself, but he said do it with me. So you're moving with God, for with God, not, not just for God, but with God. And so therefore, there's a lot of people that do things, they're doing things for God, but they're not doing things with God. My brother, your last fail, you go back and look. What's, did you fail because it was with God or was it with yourself? Take a look. Consider it. Was it with you or what? Well, I thought I was. No, 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 no. But with God, all things are possible. Examine your principle. We talked about earlier about exam, self-examination. We got to examine some things. And a matter of fact, we need the Holy Spirit to examine us. And we examine by the word of God. Praise the Lord. So, so we have it. So I want to tell you, so all things are possible to him that believe. Now, you may be here, my brother, you may be here, my sister, and, and for the first time even hearing this broadcast and uh, listening, tuning in, praise God, to us. And you're not saved. I want to give you this opportunity right now because the plan of God uh, for you is to receive his son. God has a plan, and if you follow the plan, you'll get the victory. God's plan is for you to receive his son. For the Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth on him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. I come to tell you, my brother and my sister, that God has a plan for you to receive Jesus and receive what he did for you. Matter of fact, his working, that he was whipped for you, that he was, he bled for you on the cross of Calvary for you. Now will you receive him, praise the God. This is God's plan. No matter how far your sins are, they're astronomical. I, I know you can look back. I done did so many things. I can't get forgiven. I come to tell you that God wants to forgive you of each and every sin because he loves you. Because as a matter of fact, he loves you so much, he sent his son to die for you. So Jesus came to pay the penalty and the price for your freedom. Now, because the debt of sin, sin is that for the wage of sin is death. So that's been paid. But Jesus paid that for you. Now, will you come right now and receive that? I want you to do with me, if you would. I will lead you in the word of prayer. And after I lead you in the word of prayer, Jesus will be your Lord and Savior. Now say to me, Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. First, I ask you to forgive me. I turn, I repent of what I've been doing. I repent of the way I've been acting, the way I've been thinking, all that I've been doing. But I come to you and ask you to forgive me because I, I have sinned. And I know that I'm a sinner, and I just ask you to forgive me for sinning. Lord Jesus, I confess this with my mouth, and I believe this in my heart. I believe you died for me. I believe you rose on the third day just for me, and you rose up with great victory and glory. And because of you being raised up, I thank you, Lord. And I believe this. I confess this with my mouth, and I believe this in my heart. And I thank you right now that I'm now saved. Come on, give God the glory. Give him the declaration. You're now saved. You are. You have completed the plan and the promise of God. Hallelujah. That was Shavakat, the plan of God, the promise of God. So eternity is now set. Hey, glory to God. Thank you, Lord, and I bless you. My brother and my sister, we'll talk to you next week. Take care now. In Jesus' name, amen.